I mean, I definitely had this kind of moment of, I call it in the book, an oh fuck moment, like kind of crossing a threshold where you go from being vaguely aware of climate change as something that's sort of hanging out on the edge of your field of vision on the list of all of the things that, you know, yeah, that might make up the trouble that the world is in, to it being the thing that is keeping you awake at night. And I, I was still doing some shifts at the at Radio Sheffield at the time. And I remember kind of climbing around on desks, switching off the, the monitors that my colleagues had left on when they had gone home, you know, it, recycling as if it's going to um, make everything okay. And that sort of, it's almost like you, you get hit by that and you go through a season in which you're kind of frantically trying to keep up some secret deal with the universe, where if I do all of Bargaining. this stuff... Bargaining. You're trying to bargain your way out of this. Right, exactly. Um, and then somewhere further down the line, you go across another line where you go, oh, oh gosh, I might change all the light bulbs that my arm can reach and like, persuade all of my friends to stop flying and, and the rest of it, and it might still not be enough. And at that point, you're kind of having... You're hitting a confrontation with an enormity, and this is where I actually think that, that it might be helpful to bring this stuff closer to this, you know, to the way I was talking about the sacred at the beginning, like the encounter with something vastly larger and other than us. Uh, and this is the kind of inkling that I've had lately that, that part of what happens around climate change is that for those of us who... Uh, have at least one side of ourselves that has been kind of schooled in and initiated into this modern way of being in the world in which science is the thing that has the authority to tell us what is real and true and all of that. Uh, climate change is the place where that side of ourselves gets given the permission to experience the sense of living in a time of endings. And I say it like that not because I'm particularly wanting to question the veracity of what science has to tell us about how deep the trouble we're in is. But because I think that often there's also, there are other sides to the trouble we're in. I, I say it in the book, if the IPCC were to turn around tomorrow and say, guys, it's terribly embarrassing. Turns out we did our sums wrong. You can put out all the CO2 you want. It's not going to change the, uh, the climate system and the atmospheric chemistry after all. Like, I don't think many of us who are in any way kind of alive or awake to or just kind of even keeping in a box in the corner of ourselves this sense of the trouble that we're in with climate change, I don't think many of us really believe that if that happened, everything would be okay. I think it's more that you know, climate change is the place where the news about the trouble we're in is brought to us with the stamp of the authority of science. And therefore, we get permission, the modern parts of ourselves get permission to experience this sense of living at a time of being called deeply into question, a time where we can't go on like this. And I can think of people I talk to who are totally alienated from science and don't actually, you know, aren't, aren't really willing to consider that um, climate change is happening, or at least that it's caused by humans, or at least that it's a problem, but who, for other reasons, have been brought to that sense of things can't go on like this. I, we're deep in trouble. We're in a time of endings. Um, and I think part of what I've tried to do with the book is actually to, to build some bridges where we can, we can meet around that deeper sense. There's a, a, a guy whose work I found while I was writing the book, Federico Campagna, who has this thing where he says, you know, sometimes you're born into the ending of a world. This is a thing that happens. It's happened before in other times and places. And I think for me, there's something quieting and something helpful about that in contrast to the kind of, uh, the, everything is staked on what we do in the next few years, which is often the, the tone of voice we move into when we start to talk about climate change. So sometimes you're born into a time of endings and what Federico says is, uh, how do you recognize this? You recognize it because the future doesn't work anymore. Because the future in the ordinary sense of the word is, is a kind of projection that's made from the recent past through the present onwards, offering a, a trajectory of promise or hope, or at least sense of security of continuity. 
And if you've been born into the ending of a world, then you're at the end of the story, the narrative arc of that world. And when people try to talk about the future, when they appeal to the future in that way, it doesn't sound convincing anymore. And I think we can kind of see how this has been playing out politically over the last 10 years or more, that there's a lot of, there's a lot of potency in reaching towards the past, in invoking the past just now. I think of Anthony Barnett saying about Brexit and the election of Donald Trump, and he's like, you know those slogans, make America great again, take back control. Well, the two most important words there are again and back. It's this potency of you know, gesturing towards the past rather than the future, which is, you know, which is true in a certain sense to the kind of moment we're in, even if the ways that that then gets used might not be helpful and might lead in directions that we would want to resist. Um, so then, like, Campania's thing is, so if you're in a time where you recognize that the world into which you were born is, is coming to an end, then oh, maybe the moves that are worth trying are like to stop worrying as much about making sense according to the logic of the world that is ending and to start trying to make good ruins because you know there's going to be people around and there's going to be work to be done through and on the far side of whatever it is that's ending and whatever it is that's ending is going to leave things behind out of which people are going to have to make ways of living, make lives worth living under the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And so rather than, you know, maybe this is how come you and I both find ourselves on this kind of the downwardly mobile trajectory is because in some sense, this kind of call that's hard to put words to can be a call to worry less about uh, succeeding within the logics of the world that is ending and attend more to what's going to be around for those who are realizing in one sense or another that something is ending and nonetheless that we're still here and we're going to still be here and we're going to have to find ways of making life life worth. Mm -hmm.